Greetings everyone, I am Lotus Prince, and for this game we are going to play the sequel to Clock Tower on Super Famicom. Um, Clock Tower. Yes, this game has the same exact title. Not really just in America. Here's the thing. Clock Tower for the Super Famicom only ever came out in Japan, and the West never got it. So when Clock Tower 2 came out, well, America didn't call it Clock Tower 2 because, hey, where's the first one? So they just called it Clock Tower. And it is a little weird. You're going to see in the opening movie, and I'll make reference to it in the Let's Play, that clearly something happened before this game started. And the entire setup of the game is, oh man, you remember those Scissor Man murders? Oh, those were pretty rough, huh? And meanwhile, the players are sitting there going, what Scissor Man murders? Like, is this, is this lore? What's going on? And meanwhile, this is all just information that happened in the previous game for a completely different company's system. So, that's a little weird. So, if you want to see, really, what's going on with this game, then I recommend that you play the original Clock Tower yourselves, or look up a Let's Play of it. And again, I have done a Let's Play of Clock Tower before, so if you want to look up that one, go right ahead. But this game is going to follow the same protagonist, as well as a second protagonist, uh, and see how they deal with a new rumor of Scissor Man murders coming back, which is uh, a little unnerving because I'm pretty sure we took out the Scissor Man in the first game. So what does that mean? Are we dealing with a copycat killer? Or did we not finish what we thought we did on the Super Nintendo or Super Famicom? Well, as we play this game, we're going to find out. This is an interesting one. As I indicated, we have two protagonists we can play as. Now, in the original Clock Tower, you had eight endings, A through H, and then a secret ninth ending, ending S. In Clock Tower for the PS1, you have ten endings in total, A through E, for both characters. No S ending, but you still have more endings than we did before. So let's take a look at what happens when we play Clock Tower in 3D. Let's go crazy. Good old PlayStation logo. Unauthorized re Really? An anti-piracy message? Really? On a video game? Okay. Oh man. Human entertainment, but that still FMV looking kind of image just reminds me of the Fatal Frame 1 chapter pictures. Remember this? No? Oh, you didn't play the SNES game that didn't come out in your country? Oh. Too bad, I guess. Remember that time we killed a giant baby? The evil the mother of men. With a knife? No, it sounds crazy, but it looks like they were killed with a giant pair of scissors. The giant scissors once again search for prey. Oh man. The trail of terror stretches across Europe from Norway to England. 
All this music's rad. There it is, the Barrow's Mansion. We have to go there and look around, but we'll never solve the Miss Griff's isn't it? Got to be joking. It's way too dangerous. As long as he's alive, we're not safe anywhere, Doctor. One after another, <gasps> the horrifying murders continue. We'll make it through this game of murder alive. Clock Tower. Coming to your local grindhouse. <laughs> Fear is fascinating. You know, I gotta say, of course PS1 had those waxy looking FMV characters, but something about those people and those those scenes, like it just looked like Sega Saturn graphics. This is kind of cool. I'm trying to pick up if this is a cover of an original track. Oh no, 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 go back, go back. I was a fool. I don't even, okay. Jeez. You may recall in the original Clock Tower that there were, um, eight endings normally, A through H, and then a secret S ending. Here we actually play as two characters, with five endings each, meaning we have actually one more ending than the original game had. Yes, each character has five, but for the combined total, you know, that's, that's pretty cool. That's, that's a lot of effort put into this thing. Also, I don't even know what pamphlet is supposed to be. Oh, that's cool! I guess you find them in-game. That's kind of cool! And this must be for, um, those of you at home who may not have played on a completely different console. You know, the PlayStation 1 is Sony's first console, so you could not have possibly played the first clock tower on a Sony console, so, uh, Super Nintendo, let's see what it says. Or Super Famicom, excuse me. In the mountains of Romsdaren, Norway, I hope I didn't butcher that pronunciation, stands the Barrows Family Mansion. This mansion had a large clock tower, by which the locals tended their flocks in the surrounding fields. The local people called the mansion the Clock Tower. In 1986, the mistress of the Barrows Mansion gave birth to twins. From the day they were born, however, it was obvious the twins were not normal and were evil. From the day they were born, it was apparent that they were evil. I mean, alright, the original Clock Tower did justify that, they were little demons, but like, it just, out of context, it's pretty crazy. The twins were given the names Bobby and Dan, who were later to become the murderous Scissormen. In 1995, a young girl from the Granite Orphanage, whose parents died when she was quite small, was lured into the Barrows Mansion where she was attacked by a monster, wielding a giant pair of scissors. That monster was the grown-up Bobby. She managed to escape from the terrible horrors, destroy the monster, and flee the mansion. You remember that, um, actually she activated the clock tower's bells, and Bobby couldn't take the, uh, the loud noise and fell off the top. Can you fly, Bobby? For the next year, all of Norway was caught up with the sensationalized Scissorman murder. Tch, <laughs> murders. Although Jennifer thought he was dead, Scissorman has reappeared. Okay, I kind of like that that's all the context you need, although it would have been interesting if they addressed um, Mary's role in that, you know, Bobby's mother. You know she's dead, unless, well, if Bobby could fall off the clock tower and live, then, you know, <laughs> all bets are off, am I right? I think I've put this off long enough, let's play the game. Gigas? It certainly is an attacking in a... A form I cannot comprehend. Professor Bark. Professor Bark. Professor Bark. Thank God for subtitles. What on earth are you doing, Professor? You mustn't hypnotize her like this. 
She's not ready to remember the murders yet. Helen, the clock tower murders are fascinating research material for me. <laughs> I must know the truth of what happened. She can't take any more of this today, Professor. I'm taking her home. I go to the mouse now. But remember one thing, Helen. You may be her guardian, but you are also my assistant. Yes, Professor. This is some top tier voice acting on that guy's part. Oh my god. This game's gonna be enjoyable just for that. Wait, am I am I just him now? Alright. And sure enough, the game plays the same way the SNES version did, which is pretty cool. I have to move the cursor with the D-pad. I don't know, but maybe this game predated the analog stick controllers, but whatever. Oh, cool. Camera angles change. The Clock Tower Murders. The mass murder of over 10 victims in this case. How intriguing. Jennifer Simpson, only one of two survivors. I have to get information out of her for future profiling materials. Okay, wow, who was the second survivor? Because Lot dies no matter what, and... I don't know, I, th I could have sworn that the S ending was not canon. But if the S ending's not canon, then who was the second survivor, right? And even if the S ending were canon, which is the friend who lived? Huh. Alright. Also, can I just move around like before? Oh, I can. In fact... I think... Can I... Yeah, I can pick up the pace. Ah, oh, that's pretty cool! Also... A giant pair of scissors is on the desk. There are a replica of scissors used by the murderer in the clock tower case. These are like the weapon he used to slash up his victims. Jeez. Honestly, the sudden abrupt cut of the music was arguably scarier than the, the actual zoom. Like, am I going crazy? Um, okay. Also, I don't know if slash would be the best, uh descriptor for how he killed. It was more like stab. Even though scissors usually cut. A file cabinet. Patients' records are stored here. What's this? There's a memo stuck between the pages. Sorry, sometimes, like, unless that arrow in the lower right is there, the subtitles just go. Like, I, I, I can't control some of the subtitles. But there's hint number one, so we can look this up whenever we like, I guess. Oh, interesting, but I can't read it? And this is our inventory menu. I guess I can't read it unless I get out of the game and go into the hints. Unless. Oh, get out of here. I could That's kind of cool, actually. Also, I could save whenever I want. I guess why not? The SNES had autosave. Also, that was quite a lot of time to check for the memory card. I'm playing this on a damn PS3. Alright. I could reset the game to read the hint right now, but I mean, I've been playing the game for freaking 10 seconds, so I kind of don't want to do that to you. So, that was cool. Is there- oh, sorry, I started moving with a stick and I couldn't do anything. Anything in here? Hmm, there's a faint smell of ammonia. Cool. Alright, I guess we're done. And this is this is one thing that does bother me a little bit. Even though the SNES game did this too, you have to move the character to stretch the screen so you can see what's next. I'm in a tiny room. Like, I have to move the character to adjust the angle so I can see the door. That's a little weird, but I guess that's what you get when you're moving around in a 3D environment. This is new for Clock Tower. I want Barton to advance the story so I could hear more of his delicious voice acting. My laboratory. Lately I've been doing mostly criminal psychology research. Hmm, the staff is still here. You're fired. The lot of you. Oh, and I, I can play. Alright. Is... 
I don't know. It's, I guess no one's with that. Oh, that's me? Oh, gee, for some reason I thought it was this person. Unbelievable. And what else is going around? Here? Oh, okay. Alright, hi. Professor, Helen left a few minutes ago and she looked... Really angry. Hmm. <laughs> cool conversation. You know, Helen and Jennifer are really beginning to look like sisters, aren't they? Hmm. No, okay. I guess that's what happens when you live together. One mustn't let their personal feelings get in the way. Jennifer is nothing more than another research subject. Really? Is this just the villain? Uh, yes. Yes, you're right. Like, who would say that? That's something the villain would say. She's nothing more than a test subject. Alright. Also, is that a thing? That is a thing. A statue. It is cold. One of the items found at the scene of the Clock Tower murders. It seems to be hiding some sort of secret. It would be a good idea to get an expert opinion on this. That might actually be the statue that we had to grab from one of the urns or something and put on, um... Like, the altar to go underground toward the end of the game. That's actually pretty rad. Like, the, the devil statue. Um... Oh. Whoa. Hi. Is it Halloween already? There's another guy, too. Scissor Man's Rubber Mask. A kind sold in cheap novelty shops and seems to be fairly popular. People certainly buy stupid things. I mean... Okay... Professor, a newspaper reporter is here. Did you have an appointment for an interview? Newspaper reporters are nothing but test subjects. Do not let personal feelings get in the way. It's about the clock tower murders, isn't it? Hmph. <laughs> I guess they want to sensationalize this. Scissor man, who really doesn't even exist. Scissor man. It'd be cool if he were real. Be careful what you wish for. <laughs> huh? Or, um, just a joke. What does that mean? Like, do we think he never existed, or do we think he no longer exists? Because these murders kind of absolutely happened. There's still something I need to do in here. Oh, oh, is this... That's conspicuous. A stuffed animal. Looks like a prize won at a fair. I mean, are we good? I just can't talk to you anymore? Is there anything at my- oh wait. Yes I can, there we go, I didn't press the end dialogue button. I wish I had a cute kid sister. A cute kid brother would be okay too. Alright. It's pretty rad. I never did check the big desk. Or maybe I did, all right. There's literally nothing to see here. No, 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 I talked to you enough. File cabinets? Was that anything? No. Oh, the, the, the computers? Harris's desk. Clipped out articles of the clock tower story are scattered about. It seems Harris has gone somewhere. Is that my hint? Can I go? Hey, hey alright. Okay. Oh, hey. Oh, Professor. A newspaper reporter was looking for you on the first... floor. Oh, thank you. Okay, now this is a big deal. Um, basically, this is one thing that I've, um, I've seen from, like, a hint. If I just shut up now and move on with my life, then I'm going to play as Helen. If I keep talking to him, then I'll play as Jennifer. I'll start off with Helen, because I just... Maybe I'm wrong, but I imagine Jennifer would be a, a bigger finale because she's the main 
character, you know, uh, at least with the first clock tower. So I'm going to shut my mouth. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Can I not? There it is. I have to have precision aiming for this elevator. Good, and it automatically takes me in. I appreciate that. In the void elevator. Can I... Okay. <laughs> I am the one who called you from Oslo, from the Oslo Weekly News. My name is Nolan Campbell, and this is Tim, my cameraman. It's a pleasure. I'm a bit busy. Please keep it brief. I okay. I guess I'll go ahead and talk to him. Is it just both of them? I can't choose one. Makes it easy, I guess. Then I'll get right to the point. Have you been able to figure out who the murderer is? I can't say anything for sure yet, because the victim's testimony lacks credibility. Oh, do you mean the victim that's testifying? That'd be Jennifer Simpson, wouldn't it? Yes, but what about her? Oh, uh, nothing really, it's just that we saw her leaving a few minutes ago. And since we'd run into her, we asked her for an interview, but she refused. I guess we're good. You just said her testimony lacked credibility. I know what you are going to say. That monster she was talking about, the Scissor Man. And whether he really exists or not. That's it. That's right. That is what our readers want to know. Because the existence of the Scissor Man has become a symbol of terror among youngsters. That's a word that normal people use. Yes, and that's because trashy gossip magazines like yours have sensationalized the Scissor Man murders. Oh, the whole thing. I took a guess. Ouch, that hurts. Not much I can say to that, is there? Keep going. Well, let's start from the conclusion. It's fact that there was a murderer who used a giant pair of scissors as his murder weapon. But that doesn't make him into an immortal monster. We're just dealing with some odd screwball. But what about what she said? She was scared. She thought she saw something. Oh, I see, but... Okay, that's it. Interview's over. There is something I must be attending to. Ah, uh, well, okay, I understand. Thank you very much. Sorry I couldn't be as much help as you had hoped. No kidding, that was, that was basically a non-interview. I have to get back to the lab. See what's on the slab. I'm expecting another survivor of the clock tower. Murders. He is supposed to be a young boy, about ten years old. What? What? Well, he wasn't in the first game. Unless he's Bobby, even though we've already confirmed that the Scissor Man was a grown-up Bobby, so I don't even know what that means. But... Okay... Again, I have to go out. Whoops. Okay. So I'm gonna go right back to where I came from. Which was here? Eh? Okay. Okay, I thought I was gonna start talking. It just puts me into the middle of the room.
Am I looking at the statue or the person? Oh, that's right. I still need to get an expert opinion on this statue. Do I talk to you? There it is. Professor, the boy that survived the clock tower murders is here. Oh, has he arrived already? Yes, he's waiting in the therapy room. Is there something I can do for you? Um, okay. Uh, alright, I guess we're good. Oh, I should probably ask Professor Sullivan, the head librarian at the Metropolitan Library. Yes, but there was that old butler at the Barrows Mansion named Rick. I'll show it to him first to see if he knows anything. I'm pretty sure he lives in the suburbs. Now, I could ask Harris to show it to him. Ask Harris. Interesting. Okay. Yeah, what the hell? Do I actually choose the option? Oh, there it is. That's so weird. Okay, take the statue to Rick, Mr. Harris. Alright, I'll ask Harris to show it to Rick. Harris, show this to Rick. Harris, would you take this statue and show it to a man named Rick? Is that the statue that was at the scene of the crime? Murders? Yes, it is. Would you ask him if he knows anything about it? Yes, I'll go and ask him on my way home this evening. Very good. Thank you. Okay, that's that. I should probably go to the therapy room. All right. Is that the next room, I assume? That's where we started with Jennifer, right? Once again, you'd think a scene would start, but all right. I just, you talked to both of them. Okay. Thank you very much for coming. How do you do? I am an instructor at the Granite Orphanage. I am Edward's guardian. Edward, I thought he completely lost all his memory from the shock. Yeah, I'm standing right here, guy. Does he remember his name? No, I call him Edward because not having a name to go by makes things very difficult. All right. Now, since this is our first day, will you answer some simple questions for me? Do I look better in this suit or... Okay, Edward, now I want you to honestly tell me everything you remember about what happened. Er, yes. Go on. Well then, let's get started. Oh, okay. Sure. Please, I- oh god, is it really gonna take this long every- good, alright. I was hoping it wouldn't take 20 minutes to check the memory card every damn time. Boom. Boom. Snap cut to, uh, Helen. Yeah, we're Helen now. So, that takes care of, I guess, playing as Barton for a while. Sure, why not? So, at this little, uh, change of character, it is time to stop the installment. Well, we certainly made a lot of progress today, didn't we? We've gotten a little bit of backstory regarding the original Clock Tower game, and we have, uh, found that we can play as Jennifer or her caretaker Helen. We opted for Helen, so we took care of this Mr. Barton person who decided to take this demon statue that was in his office and have one of his men send it over to a man named Rick who can perhaps give an expert opinion on the thing. And now we meet another patient, Edward, apparently a second survivor of the Clock Tower incidents. This is a mystery to me, so I guess we'll see how this develops. But of course, now it's time to play as one of our two main protagonists. This time it's Helen. Until next time, everyone.